Hi, and welcome to the Indie Music Podcast, the podcast for independent musicians and other audio professionals. We're your hosts. I'm Matt Denton, also known as Mojo of Ragged Birds Music. I'm a Bay Area mix engineer and recording artist. And Douglas Reynolds of Resonance Mastering, a mastering engineer in Bloomington, Illinois. Welcome to Indie Music Podcast, episode 208. In tonight's show, Matt and Doug decide to come in with no preset topic and just riff to see where it goes. We talk about project backlog and emotional context of resurrecting old, unfinished projects. We then move into a discussion of practicing and learning from others. Enjoy the show. What are you getting your mic adjusted? I am now adjusted in a reclining position. (laughs) It's not really reclining. It's just, you know, not hunched over the um, desk. They're kind of a reclining chair workstation. No. You put like your your computer above you, connected to your chair. So any... Any angle that your your chair is, it moves with you. And so you could have like your DAW, but you could be like reclining. <laughs> that feels like a bit much. <laughs> I don't uh, need like the whole like. You know, I wouldn't put it down until you tried it, you know. The Star Wars, you know, I, I'm, I'm picturing, you know, Luke because he's shooting the TIE like fighters. In the except, yeah. yeah, except it's not that. It's it's you and your moving gaming chair, but you're. You know, How cool would that be though? Mixing. You could call it like. I'm only studios. pretending to be a hater, but I would love that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that would be so awesome. Oh, uh, okay, so okay, another okay. Reason wait, to gain so, another ten pounds, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I wonder if anybody's mixing in a gaming chair. Like, you know, they have those sub packs that you strap on, and you can feel the sub bass. I wonder if you sit in a gaming chair while you're mixing, and you can feel the rumble. <laughs> All right, if if you are. <laughs> Mixing in a gaming chair, we want to hear from you. We totally want to hear from you because, uh, hey, if I can <laughs> if I can buy a gaming chair <laughs> and, like, write that off my taxes as a business expense, <laughs> I'm in. I'll go to Costco tomorrow <laughs> if I want. <laughs> uh, if it's worth it. How are you, man? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? I'm all right. I was, uh, yeah, I was waiting for the neighbor kids to shut up. And so I was working on the car. I got this check engine light that keeps coming on and... I wish that that was a clever segue into a topic that we've chosen, but it's not. It's just a check engine light that keeps coming on. <laughs> I thought I fixed the problem. So did you go out and like yell at the kids? Or no, anything? no, no. It's just the it's get obnoxious. off my lawn. No, they're they're in the adjacent. Their backyard is adjacent to our best like kitty corner, and and usually in the summertime, you know, I hear them, you know, being obnoxious around the pool, but not usually this early in the year. It just it happens to be nice this afternoon and they were just out randomly screaming in the backyard (laughs) i didn't want to start off this podcast with another complaint so that's not a complaint that's just an observation although i think you know we we should like (laughs) record that as part of the podcast or something i almost did because i was like you i remember i texted you and said you would not believe the noise that they're making (laughs) and i actually did occur to me to record them and go see this is why I can't do the podcast right now. <laughs> and you'll be like, what are they doing to each other? I'm like, don't know, but it sure is loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, this time of day, things are still going on around here. Like cars are driving by, people are picking up kids from school. And yeah, it's it's a little different. It's a little different. It's weird. Like our normal time, things have chilled out to the point where I don't have to worry about background noise. And Yeah. Also, it's Friday. And if you haven't noticed, I mean, you know, sunsets. A little bit longer into the day now, so yeah, nice. yeah, the days are getting a little longer, noticeably longer. Yeah, which is nice. Gives me hope for spring. Yeah, our trees are starting to bloom. Um, uh, the magnolias look. on our street are in full bloom. We have a really interesting really? mix of, um, like, you know, evergreens and magnolias and, you know. Uh, maples and oaks and it's just yeah we get we get like fall colors around here like crazy and then we get all the spring blooms um uh-huh. which of course you know drive my allergies crazy but in the meantime it's pretty it's a beautiful shade of white here oh the snow 22 degrees today oh, like moly <laughs> i don't even know what to say to that <laughs> there's nothing in bloom no blooms no 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 smoker just death and <laughs> freezing cold. But it's nice to look at, right? You know, it makes me like really appreciate how tough these wild animals are that live in this stuff. 
Yeah, you know, I, I don't really think about that too much, but that's a really good point. I was asking my son the other day, he's like, how do how do the crows keep from having their, their feet freeze? Mm. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Those are tough because they. I mean, that is, they have skin, and uh, that you know, how do they keep that from like frostbite? Crows are hella smart too. We got we got we got a lot of crows in our area, and uh, they'll just sit there and they'll like watch you go by. And I know that they know who you are. And uh, we get crows. I hear I can hear it. And we get crows in front of our house. They'll um they find walnuts right, and they'll go and they'll drop the walnuts in the street and then fly down and check to see if they've cracked open yet. If they didn't crack open, they'll just, they'll pick it up and they'll fly a little higher and they'll drop it again and they'll <laughs> go down and they'll just, they'll just do that over and over until it cracks open. And I mean, you can tell when you drive by and instead of flying away like pigeons, the crows just kind of walk out of the way and look at you sideways like, dude, I'm trying to crack a walnut here. Don't be driving by and picking your kid up. <laughs> They're super smart. They're out doing their thing on days that I can't imagine being outside in. You know, it's, I mean, more than like a few minutes. And so it's pretty incredible that they live out there in that, you know, and everything else that's, that's out in the wild. I, I don't know. It, uh, it is just pretty cool that they're that tough. They're able yeah. to do it. And maybe it's different. I mean, you know how certain animals, they like get a winter coat and then they'll shed it. You know, I mean, maybe there's some, uh, some natural adjustments that get made that we're not aware of. Like. Antifreeze in their blood. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe they get an extra layer of feathers underneath it that create a special insulating layer that you can't tell. You gotta be. Well, speaking of dormancy and things uh, overwintering and stuff, I had an idea for tonight's topic, which we hadn't picked yet. Oh, oh really? I could key off of what uh, which the dormancy is, um, thing, too. We were talking today, it wasn't even the regular topic, it just came up, about, like, resurrecting projects that have lying dormant. Like instead of starting a new, like I was asking people, Hey, just checking in real quick. How's everybody doing with uh, February album writing month or fall? Has anybody started on it? Cause I haven't written a word and it's, you know, we got one more week in February and everybody's like, no, I haven't done anything because I was doing this other thing. No, I haven't done anything because I was finishing up some old stuff. No, I haven't done anything because I was, uh, you know, working on this stuff that I was already working on, didn't want to start anything new. And I was thinking about that and how you had said that, uh, <laughs> you know, the song that, that, uh, uh, I hadn't finished that you suggested we should work on together. And, uh, I just, it just got me thinking about, you know, resurrecting old projects versus starting new projects and how cathartic that can be and how, you know, um, it's kind of like a load off your mind or not only that, but how do you get back into a project that you kind of abandoned? Do you know what I mean? Hmm. I finish all my projects, man. <laughs> <laughs> I half believe you. <laughs> nope. Cause I, I know I, you I, have a, you have a, you have a excellent work ethic and I do admire that. <laughs> um, but I know that most people You know, I got stuff I know, back there. There's there's things that are emotionally <laughs> involved that I'm not in the same emotional context as I was when I started them. And oh, coming back toughy. into them is it feels detached. Yep. And I'm looking for a connection to that emotion, but, you know, just not there. Uh, and so that stuff sits around for me. And... I honestly have like three backlog projects right now that uh, that are sitting there, and two of them are fit that description of they're out of emotional context right now. Yeah, that's a really good point. And one of them, I'm just not really willing to go back and revisit that context. So, mm. yeah, I didn't even think of that, but that's one of the reasons that uh, I have some things in my bucket for I want to say like a decade. Like I wrote them and they, they were meaningful. Some of them, I wrote them, they were meaningful at the time. They don't mean the same thing to me now. Some of them still mean the same thing. And I'm like afraid to resurrect them because of what it would bring back up. Um, but I think more often than not, and I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I feel like some, there's a, there's an energy that you get when you start a project and it's hard to sustain that energy when you get to what's frequently referred to as the soggy middle you know, that part 
of any project of any type where you're kind of, you're too far from the beginning to have that beginning energy and you're not close enough to the end to have that end in sight where you know you're on your way downhill, right? Yeah. You're kind of walking through the fog of what, uh, I, I think of this a lot. <laughs> the very first time I took Taekwondo, um, they called it the green belt blues and the green belt in this particular um, version of Taekwondo was kind of like the middle belt. Like you progress quickly from white to yellow to orange, and then you end up at green and you kind of, it's a plateau and you stay there for a while. And if you stay there for too long, you kind of feel like you're never going to progress to the next level and you kind of lose your spirit about it. Yeah. And that's kind of like the soggy middle of belts, but I think of that a lot. The green belt blues is kind of like that, where you 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 don't have the beginning energy, and you don't have the end in sight, and you kind of lose your way a little bit, and you lose your focus a little bit, and you kind of lose your why. And I think that that's a big thing. You you kind of forget why you started it or what was exciting about it, and then the next thing comes along, and you go, oh, cool new thing, cool new riff, cool new lyric, cool new whatever, cool new plugin, <laughs> cool yeah. new gear. And it, it's got that shiny new energy and you can latch onto that. And suddenly that project's 10 years old that you didn't finish. And is it ever going to get finished? You got to be careful there. And in, in the analogy of the of Taekwondo and in, uh, in some cases, the dojo and the, and the sensei um, kind of may have it arranged that you're going to hang out at that level for a while because that's where they make their money. Oh, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> I thought you were going to say because they know that you're not ready to progress. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, that's for the, guided. I know. For the good. <laughs> for the good of the dojo. You know, for the good dojo. <laughs> you're going to be a green belt for a long time. <laughs> Keep paying me that yeah. monthly fee. And I've, I've studied Taekwondo <laughs> and, I, and I also study, I also study uh, Wing Chun. Okay. And, and there's Sifus in Wing Chun. Talk about that all the time, about reputable reputable sifus and, and, and dojos, which is it's not called dojo in, in Chinese, but can't think of the word right now. And cause it's been so long since I've been, mm -hmm. but it's really important to make sure that uh, you continue progressing and you're not being held up by an outside influence. In this case, your teacher, you know, who may have ulterior motives. Sure. Well, that's interesting. So what kind of outside influences in music do you have that may be holding you up against your own will? Well, I want to say it might be one of your other selves, the one that provides the resistance, the critic who uh, you're supposed to put in the corner while you're creating that is the naysayer, the, the internalized voices of uh, the people who told you you couldn't do whatever it is that you're trying to do. Those could be the external forces. They're internalized external forces. I find that those voices are very persuasive sometimes. Like, oh, you're not good enough to finish this. Oh, you've waited too long. Oh, you're not in the emotional space. You're not in the mental space. Oh, you need the, you need this piece of, you need this guitar pedal before you can have the right tone to, per yeah, you know what I mean? There's, there's yeah. so many, and all of that is just, it's just excuses, really. It's just things that you're throwing in your own path to, to stumble on. I hit the not good enough thing probably more often than not. And it's because what I've got in my head often exceeds what I have in my fingers. Um, and then it takes a long time for me to, to work up what it is that I had in my head. And, you know, and that's a bunch of rehearsal right? over the same thing over and over again to try and nail the part down. And then you kind of lose your steam uh, from that, if that makes sense. It totally makes sense. And I don't know. I, I don't, have a, a good way to get around that because that sounds very similar to that kind of uh, the, the technical obstacle that I think we've talked about before, where if you don't have your stuff all ready to go and inspiration strikes and you have to stop and hook things up or get things out and plug things in or do an upgrade or, you know, suddenly you've lost that spark, but this is similar, but even more ingrained where you have the spark, but you don't have the, ability right now to do that thing and that's all it becomes almost a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you don't have the chops now but you've lost the encouragement to uh, to 
work on it and build those chops, then, you know, you feel defeated before you start, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, it kind of turns more into an exercise of technical development Mm -hmm. than it does with songwriting at that point. Sure. Which is okay, because at the end of that, you've developed something. You may not have finished your song, but your song represented a, um, the purpose of the song wasn't to become a song. It was for you to become a better player in some way. Yeah, that's tough. And, you know, I had that experience, um, and yeah, I'm out of practice guitar, but uh, that was another topic I thought we might touch on. But um, I have been getting back into guitar, which is nice. I've been practicing here and there um, during meetings sometimes. Um, but uh, I had that one time, I, I wrote a song, uh, and it was uh, I was top lining, right? So the song, the music was already there, and I'd written the lyrics, and I had a vision for how it was going to be sung and it was in it was like a beyond my current range like i could i wrote a song basically that i couldn't sing but i had resigned to sing it and um that was the same year that i ended up having um sinus surgery and i had to relearn how to sing long story short it took me an entire calendar year before i was able to learn how to sing well enough to to sing this song that I had written uh, in a way that uh, I felt did it justice. I mean, that's a little different though, because that's that's a physical limitation. It is, but it also is related to practice and dedication and um, working on the instrument, whether it's an instrument that you have in your hands or an instrument that you have in your in your body. It's still I mean, I could have handed it off or rewritten it or, or just done something else. But, uh, yeah, that, I, was, I was determined. I was determined to get to a point where I could do what I wanted to with that. Sure. You know, and oddly enough, the, the topic that I had brought tonight that I hadn't mentioned was, was did you practice today? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good topic. And I, that was actually on my mind. Um, because you had said that tomorrow is a guitar day for you. And I thought, oh, that's interesting because I have just recently started practicing guitar again and practicing singing again, both semi-regularly. And it, it had been a while since I'd been doing that semi-regularly. Last, last year was a big disruption in a lot of, uh, in a lot oh, of ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Especially in the, in the practicing department for me. But yeah, it's been, uh, I've, I've been consistently practicing every day. And then uh, setting aside good chunks of time on the weekends to allow more than just uh, practicing, but uh, in writing and and stuff like that, too. So I don't have much time during the week to really work on composition, but I am kind of incorporating writing into my practice time by taking whatever it is that I'm working on and then and then coming up with ideas of that, you know, from that practice and then writing a song using those ideas. So, Oh, that's very cool. Whatever that may be. Um, that's actually been working for me here for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of, um, uh, I told you I was taking a Tom Morello masterclass and he was talking about when you practice, however long you practice for, he recommended an hour a day to break it into four distinct and I guess it doesn't matter if it's guitar or whatever, but break it into four distinct quadrants where one quadrant you're working on technique, and I guess that would be scales and whatnot. Second co- quadrant, you'd be working on a theory. Well, maybe technique is more like fingering. Theory would be more like scales. Uh, the third quadrant would be a songwriting or experimentation. And then the fourth quadrant would be improvisation. So he said that all four of those things are, are important um, to practice regularly, and he recommended breaking up your practice time into those four areas relatively equally. Yeah, interesting. I do have four areas that I that I work in. I don't know if they fit exactly what he was saying, but mine is it usually consists of like working on uh, on technique and scales, and I do that as my warm up, mm-hmm. and uh, then I work on on chord changes, mm-hmm. and uh, depending on that depends on what I'm doing. Like right now I'm working on like shell chords 
all over the neck and and cord inversions. Oh, okay. And then and I'm, then I take those and I and I start working on arpeggio versions of those same things. Oh, cool. And uh, then the fourth thing is is I work on um, songs, mm-hmm. and and that would be learning. That would be on <laughs> learning a song and record copying, listening and playing. Yep. And then just spending time as part of that segment in taking what I'm hearing and then making something of my own from it. How can yeah, I take like, ideas from that and then write something of my own based uh, off of what I just figured out? So how much of that is self-guided? Because I know you said you have a guitar teacher. Well, it's mostly all self-guided. My teacher and I work once a month and we just set some goals and talk about approaches to try and get there. and. Okay. And then come back and take a look at where we're at and then set some new goals for the ne- next month and talk about how we're going to get there. I like that. Yeah. Which is, uh, if you remember Danny Rabin that we had on the show yep. with Marvin, he's amazing. One of the best guitar players I've ever had the pleasure of knowing personally. And and he has so much music in him. And uh, I, it's really just fun to talk to him once a month, you know, so. Very cool. Yeah, it's funny. I used to, when I when I was a drummer, I used to have a drum teacher, but um after I switched to guitar, I never I never got a guitar teacher. I had a singing teacher for a while. Um well, I've had <laughs> teachers at most of my life. I think it's important to have someone that uh you know that I think it's it's important to have someone that you you listen to and go, "Wow, I'd really like to do that." Uh, they have something that I want. Yeah. To have that so when you when you're looking at a teacher, and or you're looking, you know, someone that you're considering being your teacher, what is it that they are doing or that they have that you would like to see in yourself? And if you can identify something like that, then that's what you're trying to get from that person. So right, I think it's a good idea. And then approach them and go, hey, I'd really like this about what you do. And and I think they appreciate that because when you come up to a teacher and say, I'd like to learn to play guitar. Right, that's too old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like saying I'd, you, you I'd know, like to learn to, how to cook. Okay. To really have something in mind, you know. I mean Yeah. You know, right now my, my focus is on my focus is on jazz standards right now. And oh. and in particular chord melody. And so we're just looking at jazz standards and playing in chord melody style and getting a, a, trying to get a good understanding of harmony and melody and you know, interaction of those two together through chord scales and things like that. And so that's what my focus is. That's cool. Yeah, that's a really good way to think about it is uh, approaching a teacher and saying, okay, this guy can teach me the thing that I am interested in. So you have a you have something in mind at the outset. Yeah, I mean, that makes your money go further because if you have something that you're focused on, then you can, you know, you can go deeper into it then. And because if you skate across the surface of, learning music forever, uh, you know, and you don't deep dive and it's up to you. It's your responsibility to decide what you want to do with your learning time and your playing time. And it's not really up to a teacher. It can be to, you know, that's more like taking a college course than though, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to go through this stuff and in this order. And, you know, the thing about music and learning is that there's, there's doesn't have to be really an order to things. You can, you can pick and choose what it is that you're interested in and and that you have fun with and, and do those things. Yeah, that's really true. Um, But, and that's something that uh, I know that we talked about before. And it's something that I think is worth revisiting is that concept of breadth versus depth. Yeah. And uh, I feel like, I mean, I go back and forth, but I mean, sometimes I feel like it's good to know breadth, but when you want to be really good at something, you have to focus on depth. Yeah, I agree. And it's deciding on what areas you want to deep dive into. And that's, you know, those are the areas that are important to you at that, at that time, you know, and that's, and that stuff's going to change. Uh, Right. You know, I can see you having like breadth, but then taking deep dives along the way into mm-hmm. things that you discover that are interesting that you want to learn more about, you know, and then and jump into those and spend time on them. You know, spend a couple weeks looking in depth at 
a particular thing or technique or concept or whatever it may be. You know, right. for me, you know, looking at, at at how chords and melody harmony work is what my current focus is on. Yeah, that, that kind of reminds me of conversations I've had with my kids about college and what you want to do with your life kind of thing. I think that you have to start out, in fact, I think we talked about this recently, you have to start out with the breadth to know what areas you want to go into depth on, right? Like without knowing what's out there, you don't know what you want to deep dive into. But yeah, if you find something along the way that tickles your fancy, dive right in. Well, you know what they say, you know, college is a process of learning more and more about less and less. <laughs> That's a funny way to put it. I never heard that before, but yeah, that's a uh, good point. So as you get more focused, you learn yeah. much more about a more focused right. area. Like a funnel. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting way to put it. And specialization, you know. Yes. Which doesn't mean you can't go back and learn something, learn more about something else later. No, that's what I was saying. You can kind of just deep dive and come back up to the surface and tread water and then deep dive and, you know, and just repeat. And whenever you find things that are, yeah, whenever you find things that are interesting, you know, uh, stop moving on and and stick around and check it out for a little bit longer. Well, that kind of comes full circle back to what we were just talking about with projects. You start a project and you go along for a while and then you lose interest and then you have another project and maybe you go back and deep dive on your original project, but you have to find I feel like what a component of that is is revisiting the why you started that in the first place. And some projects are not worth pursuing. Some projects are like, yeah, this was just a fluff thing or this was something that interested me at the time and I abandoned it for good reason and I, I don't need to revisit it. And that doesn't mean it was a waste of time. Maybe it was Maybe it was good practice. Maybe it was simply something that uh, you needed to do then and it was a, a stepping stone on your journey. Um, yeah. But some things I think maybe are worth – deep diving on and they do require a little bit of where was I when I started this and what, why was it important to me? And is it worth uh, going back to and fully immersing myself in this project to, to finish it? I think that, yeah, every so often I'll go through a host of my projects and kind of cherry pick the ones that I think are worth pursuing and uh, revisiting. And uh, it does take some, you know, mental and emotional commitment to get, back to it in a way that is different than when you started it and had that that primary energy that initial energy yeah maybe the the mentality that's needed for the the moral boost in revisiting an old project is that think of it more in terms of of I'm going to start a new project using assets that I've already developed rather than I'm going to go get in the quagmire of this old project again that might be a better way of looking at it. And I wonder, I'm going to try that with, uh, with a couple of the things that I never finished and uh, see if I can, instead of saying, let me take myself back 10 years to where I was mentally and emotionally with this. Hang on. Something truck is backing up. Instead of, instead of flinging myself back and saying, I have to be where I was 10 years ago mentally and emotionally with this, just saying, okay, I'm going to pick this up with my current maturity and energy and see where I can take this now. That's a different thing. Yeah. Cause I mean, you're going to have new ideas and new, new abilities and different, a whole different person really from whatever, if the project was 10 years ago, I mean, you're, you're a lot different person now than you were 10, 10 years ago. You're going to, it's going to be a lot different song now than it was 10 years ago. Right. Uh, that's it, man. We're done. <laughs> I was waiting for the helicopter to go by. <laughs> like, I'm just not used to all this kind of random noise. Um, I think Fridays are different. Early is different. But yeah, I think that's all That's all really good points, man. So as we revisit uh, the song that I wrote la uh, two years ago, tomorrow, <laughs> I'll bring some fresh energy to it. It's all brand new to me. <laughs> that's a good point. It's all brand new to you, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to bring some brand new energy to it myself. We'll see how it goes. Cool. Well. I think this was a good discussion about a couple of cool things. Yeah. But did, you know, again, did you practice today? Did I practice today? You know what? Yeah. I didn't. I worked on the car instead. I'm going to practice right now. So you practiced being a mechanic today. I did. I practiced different things today.
<laughs> yeah, so you practice today. I but practice yeah, podcasting. I, I like to I like to ask myself that question. And um and I and I like to ask myself that question um earlier rather than later in the day. Yeah. You know what? I, I got my little um my little bulletin board over my monitor here. I'm gonna make a little sign that says, Did you practice today? And I'm gonna stick it up there. <laughs> and like Draw like a hand point with a finger pointing at you. <laughs> My Uncle Sam. No, I don't I don't need it to be accusatory. I just want it to be a reminder. <laughs> no, two but two fingers. Or maybe uh, actually a couple Western six guns. There you go. <laughs> Did you practice today? There you go. Do you, do you feel lucky? <laughs> do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> All right, man. Right on. Well, uh have a great weekend. Yeah, Everybody, we're wrapping it up you. if you haven't figured it out yet. So yep. <laughs> this is this is the end of the show <laughs> it's the end of the show yes uh for this week anyway for this we'll be week. back next week <laughs> no fear. we'll be back with we'll be back next week with an interview that's right i believe putting I believe the final deets correct. on that gonna have some new music to play for you yeah i'm excited yep so Always anyway, fun. we'll get a promo out on that as soon as we get the details yeah yeah, well, thanks for listening. As always, thanks for tuning in. Leave us a comment, leave us a review, leave us a like, or just check in. We yeah. really appreciate you. There are all of those, please. Or all of those. Hey, <laughs> you know, why not? Call to action. <laughs> yeah, have a great week, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just trying to like drag this thing out. You <laughs> <I> know. Know. <laughs> all right, everybody. Good. Thanks so much. Have a great week and cheers. Right, cheers. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Indie Music Podcast. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends, or just leave us a review on iTunes if you like what you've heard. Find our social links and episode guide at IndieMusicCast.com. Until next time, keep creating.